Hello, and welcome back to Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, where last episode we successfully turned Jihani back to the side of the light, and... And we also solved a murder mystery, as well as finally became a fully-fledged Jedi. However, our Jedi robes are absolute garbage compared to our Chani fiber armor, having a whole six armor points less. And of course, we can do so much more damage by equipping Mission's Vibroblade in our offhand slot. That being said, uh, I don't quite remember what our new quest is. Oh, I have to go and talk to the council. And I'm gonna turn solo mode back off. Now I can. I turned it uh, solo mode on so I could take a good picture. But I do need to talk to the council. And then. If you have questions, you should direct them toward the Jedi Council members. Well, what should I be doing? I know there's a few people here that need our help, but... They blew up Taurus. We need to do something about that. Greetings, young Padawan. Have you come seeking knowledge of the past? Those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. Or so they say. As a chronicler of the Academy here on Dantooine, I feel it is my duty to share the history of our Order with the newly initiated. Unfortunately, our recent history is one of tragedy and bloodshed. The Mandalorian Wars, the fall of Revan and Malak, the rise of the Sith. There are important lessons to be learned from these events, if we do not wish to repeat the mistakes of our past. And yet, you all will forget. And the Sith will rise several times over the course of the galaxy. Until we arrive at the Battle of Yavin. And even then, the new Sith Order, the First Order, which some do not fully recognize, but I believe it is a plausible scenario. The Sith will always rise if we are not ever vigilant. That being said, I'm eager to learn, Master Dorak. Of course, I could not tell you the entire history of our Order. The Jedi have existed for thousands upon thousands of years. We are as old as the Republic itself. Instead, I will begin 40 years ago with the War of Exar Kun. Like Malak and Revan, Exar Kun was a Jedi who fell to the dark side and led an army against the Jedi and the Republic. Exar Kun was defeated but the war left both the Republic and our own order severely weakened. For twenty years we struggled to rebuild, trying to erase the scars of the terrible conflict. I know that name. If Exar Khan did it forty years ago, I'm assuming he did that with the Junta Paul, and that his are the texts written within the Sith book for the first chapter, the second chapter then being Darth Malgus who is a prominent figure in the multiplayer games, at the MMO specifically. And then it goes to some other people that I, I'm unaware of. Oh, then it goes to Bane, who I don't know when he comes into the story, but I, I know of Bane, and I haven't written, written further than that. Writ, written? No. 
read. I haven't read further than that yet. What about the Mandalorian Wars? Twenty years ago, the Mandalorians, aware that the Republic was in a weakened state, began conquering small worlds on the Outer Rim. They were careful to choose only planets outside the Republic's jurisdiction. After much debate, the Senate chose not to intervene. As long as the Mandalorians avoided planets that were members of the Republic itself, there would be no retaliation. That sounds like a big mistake. Well, you can hardly blame the Republic. The memory of war was fresh in everyone's mind. Nobody was eager to relive the horrors in a campaign against the Mandalorians. But in the end, it was unavoidable. The Mandalorians stockpiled resources from their conquered worlds, preparing for massive assault. Seven years ago, they launched a simultaneous attack in three separate sectors of Republic space. The Senate had no choice but to retaliate with the entire Republic fleet. The Mandalorian Wars had begun. And that was only seven years. I was under the impression that that war lasted longer than that. Ten at least, but more like twenty-five to fifty. Such a short conflict for such a terrible, terrible... Well, Scar. Did the Jedi join in? The Republic petitioned the Jedi Council for aid, but there were many factors to consider before we allowed ourselves to be drawn into another conflict so soon after the war with Exar Kun. While the Jedi Council preached patience, there were many among our order who were eager for us to join the battle. Two young knights in particular demanded immediate action, Revan and Malak. They rallied many of the Jedi to their cause, and against the wishes of their masters, joined the Republic fleet battling the Mandalorians. Revan was a brilliant military leader, and the Republic fleet began to win victory after victory. Four years ago, the Mandalorians surrendered unconditionally. So it's only a three-year war. So Revan, in the end, did the right thing. No one is denying that Revan was one of the keys to defeating the Mandalorians. But something happened out there on the Outer Rim. Instead of returning after the war's end, the ships under Revan's command went deep into unexplored space. They claimed to be searching for the last remnants of the Mandalorian fleet. All contact was lost. For many months it was assumed some great disaster had befallen the entire fleet. Everyone thought they were dead. There were unsubstantiated rumors of Revan and Malak being seen on a number of different planets during these months. Scattered sightings that were never confirmed. Where did they disappear to? Perhaps they simply went far beyond the edges of Republic space. Maybe they found previously undiscovered hyperspace routes to the ends of the galaxy. Nobody knows for certain. Three years ago, Revan and Malak returned at the head of a massive invasion fleet. Revan had assumed the title of Sith Lord. The hero had become a conqueror. Hmm. Where did he get the ships for the Sith fleet? Some of the ships in the Sith fleet are those that were under Revan's command during the Mandalorian Wars. But many more are of an alien design we've never seen before. The source of this massive fleet is one of the many things about the Sith we cannot explain. It seems impossible to have created it in such a short time, yet we cannot deny its existence. The source of the Sith soldiers is unfortunately much easier to understand. Initially, the bulk of the force were former Republic soldiers who had served under Revan. With each conquest, thousands more flocked to join the invaders, swelling their numbers. Even many of our own order have betrayed us, lured by Sith promises of riches and power. How can anyone hope to stop them? For two years, the Sith were all but invincible. Fortunately, Bastila and her battle meditation allowed the Republic to win a few key victories and kept the Sith from total triumph. In desperation, we set a trap for the Dark Lord. Bastila was with the strike team that tried to capture Revan, as you probably know. She was there at Revan's end. That was nearly a year ago, but things have not improved. Malak has stepped in and assumed the mantle of Dark Lord for himself, though he's far from Revan's equal in strategy or tactics. Still, his fleet continues to grow in both ships and soldiers. If we do not find some way to stop the Sith soon, Malak will overwhelm us with sheer numbers. 
What can I learn from Revan's history? Revan's tale shows us how even the greatest of Jedi can fall to the dark side. You must always be on guard against the evil that dwells within you. Think hard upon this lesson. I will think on this, Master Dorak. May the Force be with you. Greetings, young Paddle. Blah 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 blah. Where are the Sith's? Where are the Academy's archives? This facility is a training academy. The archives here are restricted to those who have attained the rank of Master. We must protect over-eager Padawans from being exposed to dangerous knowledge. The pursuit of knowledge is a noble goal, but there are some things that require the wisdom of a master to truly understand. You should ponder the history of Revan. It contains many lessons you may need if we hope to defeat Malak and the Sith. May the f All right. Master Vandar. Your training is now complete, Padawan. And perhaps now it is time we dealt with the matter of the dream you and Bastila shared. When we heard of the ruins in your dreams, Master Dorok recognized it as one of a series of ancient structures here on Tantooine. This one in particular lies to the east of this enclave. We sent a Jedi to investigate, but he has not returned. Perhaps sending him in the first place was a mistake. The Force is guiding you through your visions. It may be that exploring the ruins is a task tied to your destiny. That is why the Council has now decided you should be the one to investigate this. The secrets to stopping Malak may be hidden within those ruins. You must investigate them and find what Revan and Malak were looking for. What happened to the Jedi that went to investigate? We do not know. That is one of the things you must investigate. We fear the worst. Is there anything else you want to know? Is there anything you can talk to me about regarding Revan and Malak? I knew Revan as a promising young pupil. Revan was strong in the Force, but also headstrong and proud. Such traits are not unusual in a Padawan. Perhaps that was why I did not see the true extent of the danger. Many of the young Jedi admired Revan, including Malak. When Revan set off to challenge the Mandalorians, Malak was the first to join the cause, and when Revan fell to the dark side, it was inevitable Malak would fall as well. So Revan was stronger than Malak. Revan was always the more powerful of the pair. When Revan fell, we had hoped the Sith threat was ended. But Malak quickly assumed Revan's role, and embraced the dark side as fully as his master ever had. Now, Malak leads the Sith Armada against the Republic. Hate and vengeance drawing him ever further down the dark path. Fueling his powers until they have surpassed those of his old master. Only you and Bastila, together, can stop Malak now. The way ahead will be difficult for young Bastila. And for you. But you must draw strength from each other. May the Force be with you. Well, I wasn't ready yet, but sure. I demand justice! The oh, Central this Family is idiot. a blight upon Dantooine! They must be punished! The Council will look into this matter, Mr. Matale. You must be patient. Your accusations have no proof, and we do not want you stirring up trouble with the Sandrals if there is some mistake. Mistake? My son Shen is missing! How can there be any doubt the Sandrals are to blame? There are other possible explanations for your son's disappearance. Ah, you Jedi are good for nothing but talk. I shall only wait so long before I take action on my own. As dangerous as the threat from Darth Malak and the Sith may be, we Jedi cannot simply abandon our other responsibilities. The Council has promised, Alan Matali, we will look into a son's disappearance. Should you have time, Padawan, you may want to investigate this matter. I will look into it. If Shen Matali has not returned to his father, it may ignite a savage and bloody feud between the Matali and Sandral estates. We must not allow that to happen. Your study and training are important, of course. But the Jedi are not a cloistered order. 
our influence and teachings must spread beyond the walls of our academies. It is in our real world that we truly prove ourselves worthy of the title Jedi. You would do well to remember this young Padawan. Not to mention that I wouldn't mind getting out of this enclave for a bit. I mean, come on, how bad could it be? Well... Uh, Karth, you're good, but I need somebody with some other skills if I'm going to go to the estates. That's where T3M comes into play. Bastil will take up the position of warrior anyway. Besides, she has Cure, which is really good. Uh, Four Shield is actually really good, too. Um, she already has the other two powers that I want her to have, too. Uh, energy Resistance is okay. Sonic, fire, cold, and electrical. Uh, two defenses gained now. That's pretty good. And you get more attacks per round. But increasing defense and saving throws is, in my opinion, more important. Because you're going to burn a lot of power doing that. Although it is worth noting that the saber counts as damage energy. Although she's a sentinel, which means that she doesn't really need good saving throws. Eh, whatever. It's something to consider for later, more than anything. And I've already explored everywhere here. And that's to the south. That goes to the ruins we can't explore yet. And... I want to find this lady's companion first and fight some of the more Mandalorians. That's my plan. Because there's a whole chunk of space here that we didn't explore. Because I was... I'm here. ...concerned about... What? Because I was concerned about not dying. Horribly, since I didn't have Bastila with me, and I had ran out of med kits. I'm here. Bastila, you are late. Actually, Bastila does not have Jedi robes. There we go. That'll work. What? That'll play. That's what I wanted. <clears throat> Alright, now I can pick some lovely, lovely little force powers. So... Uh, 
so much shit. Well, I'm always going to have at least one Jedi in my party. Besides for myself. So I don't need cure. Yet. Force Aura is plus two to all defense and saving throws. Which is good for resisting hostile effects, but I also have a really high fortitude or er, willpower, and I'm not concerned about fortitude checks. Uh, blah 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 blah. It's a fortitude check. Auto works. And that auto works. And Force Whirlwind. Is it reflex save? Force Lightning is a will save. Insanity is a will save. Yeah, plague. Plague is the one that's that you, yeah, it's impossible to resist against. Yeah, plague is 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 fucking brutal. It causes a target to suffer as a deathly ill from poison, losing twelve points from each physical attribute, which is awful. Absolutely awful. Like, if you have a score of 20, which is the max, you get reduced down to 8, which gives you a minus 1 penalty on everything. Which is awful. Absolutely awful. But, it is restricted by armor. And, our whole deal is to become impossible to hit. While also having some really just jerkwad powers. So we don't need anything that's restricted by armor is ultimately not usable. So insanity is really good if we're being evil. We're not going to be evil. And it's essentially the same thing as uh, sleep. But Stasis Field is restricted by armor. Which is a good thing to note. However, Destroy Droid is not, and Stasis itself is not. So we're probably not going to take Stasis Field. We're probably going to take Max Destroy Droid and Stasis. Uh, force Breach and Force Oppression are restricted by armor, so we're not going to be able to do that. And Force Wave is not restricted, so we'll probably do that. These are the things that really matter, is these powers at the top. So Force Armor is restricted by armor, which isn't that big of a deal because you can get a plus six at the end of the tree, which is better than the armor we have right now. But the issue with it is it takes Force Points to take that power. And Force Speed is also really good because you get go with I might have to ditch my armor for Jedi robes though because master speed is so good with this character build 
because it allows me to deal additional two attacks per round, plus flurry is additional one attack, so that's three attacks, plus having the double-handed weapon, which is plus four attacks per round, which is absolutely brutal as hell, while also having a defense bonus of four, which would be 18. No, 19. It would be 19, because base is 10, dex bonus right now is 4, and then this would give me 4, so it'd be 18, and then the armor that I, the, the robes don't count, don't count as armor, and they give you plus 1. So that's 20, and 21 when I stat out, if I stat out. I'll think about it. It's not going to be Jedi's first force power, though, and neither is Master Valor. Because Master Valor is Jedi and all party members. So only one person needs to have Force Valor, and that's not going to be me. So to strike that completely out for this character. Actually, I'm level 10. curious and I have a decent I have decent saving throws and everything so I'm not super concerned uh, um, sorry this is a, a really weird pause part but I didn't this is important this is really important force powers are not to be tried with, like, especially since I, I don't really have a good plan so I'm playing as the counselor So I get a force power every level. So I get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Thirteen force powers. If I max cap. So that is one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And I only get two more. Damn. Actually, hold on. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Incapacitated for six seconds. And take damage equal to one and a half times. Blah, 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 blah. Not stunned, but still suffer half damage. So if they stun for six seconds, and it's all enemies are stunned for six seconds. And I can do Force Whirlwind. I can downgrade to Force Whirlwind, which does a single target for 12 seconds. Which is the same as Stasis Field. The only thing with Stasis Field is that it can affect a 10 meter ra radius for 12 seconds but force wave will actually has a larger area and it's everyone within 15 meters or that's only within a 10 meter radius and that's a target um shit either way burst of speed is not what I want right now, and neither is Force Aura, and I don't need Cure right now, either. And I don't need Force Resistance.
and I don't need energy resistance. So, acknowledging that, and acknowledging that I need an offensive force power that I can use, and acknowledging that I don't need everybody in the party to have stuns. I will take a good old standby. Force push. All that for force push. Yes, all that for force push. I don't... It's going to sound weird, but I don't normally play light side. I normally play dark side, so I have no idea what my tree is. <laughs> give Bastila the party buffs, and I give myself... Oh, there's the man -hoos. Can I level in the midst of combat? That'd be dope. I can. Alright. Treat injury. Awareness. Give Bastila Master 2 weapon fighting. And then, I can't give her heal, but I can give her Night Valor. And I can give the droid a master gearhead. So the droid's not a combat character. The droid is utility. The droid is pure utility. I wonder if I can use the I can. Now, because Bastila is currently doing all kinds of other weird shit, she should be able to use Night Bomb. Too far away. George's gonna move in and hit him with a stun ray. There you go, Joydy. At this point in time, that I I realized I probably could have played as a scout, or no, I probably could have played as a scoundrel and then picked up the implant. Keys. But then I'd even have an even slower feat progression, which means I wouldn't have the abilities that sure. I need. Shit, that's a thing too. Like, I'm gonna be spending all of the feats I get just to make myself decent at melee combat. That's fine. Because, like, I think. I think there's one that makes your lightsaber better, but I don't know if that improves defense. I think that just improves your hit and damage, which is still, to be fair, what I want. Because, again, defensive buffs can offset flurry. Probably end up swapping out the droid for something else. Yeah, I'll probably end up swapping out T3M4 
Yes? Either for... A different good. Maybe for Jahani, because Bastila and Jahani and me would be really, really broken in combat. But also wouldn't be super great at utility, unless Jihani has something that I don't know about. Because, like, my character's kind of well-rounded, but the problem with that is he sucks. Hey guys, I can't fight all of these fucking path hounds at once. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna absolutely die. Yes? Run, 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 run. Shit, where are my friends? No, Bastila, Bastila, save me, save me, Bastila, 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 save me. What can I do? Don't stun thing. Oh, cause the droid ran and got attacked by the Mandos. <sighs> what even is this game? The droid got attacked by the Mandalorians. I'm running away from Cathounds. Basil's trying to stun a thing. My character seems stuck in <laughs> Oh, We're so gonna die. Bastila, stop. Stop. One fight at a time. Because if you can stop being in combat, they'll auto revive and you won't be screwed. There we go, that's what I wanted. Now everybody get the hell next to Bastila. You crazy, crazy bastards. I can't fix the droid, but I can fix the Varkalam. I just have to wait. What? For fucking ever. What can I do? You guys are stupid. You guys are so sure. stupid. Alright. Now that you're not all trying to get yourselves killed. Let's go this direction. There we go. The albino cat hound is probably going to kill absolutely all of us. Yes. So I'm gonna need everybody to focus on sure. killing the regular side. Kill the ads. Kill the ads. Kill the goddamn ads, you piece of shit. Well, I guess he's dying again. Yes. If I can, yeah, I could get him. Yeah. Oh shit! Vassal is the only one left alive. You know, kill, kill that, kill that, fucking run, kill that and run. Run, 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 if you have to. There we go. Throw the lightsaber. Frag it. Engage. You're not using flurry. Flurry is so dumb. You're also not wasting a battle stimulant. Come oh, on. And now we're saving the game. Because that was twice in a row. We almost got our asses kicked. That was brutal. 
And I, I normally, if I was playing on my own, I would just wait for the force gauge to refuel. Sure. But that's gonna take forever. Oh, thank God! It'll let me return to the Ebon Hawk. Okay. Good to know. As long as I survive the encounters, I don't have to waste med packs healing all the way back up. That's good to know. It's an embarrassing slog back to the ship, but a useful one. Now, is everybody with me? Yes. Ah, cool, I got one guy. I'm just gonna just concussion grenade ever loving at a cool. What killed him? What killed the Duros? What killed the Duros? T3 uh, fails, fails. Navar Kalam killed the Duros. I force pushed. I force pushed Duros. I force pushed him to death. Force push is actually surprisingly useful. Which actually answers my powers question. I'm not going to take Stasis Field for Navar Kalam. I might take it for some of my other party members that have already gone down that track. But I'm not going to. I know that it's like super cheap for my character because my character is. Even though probably canonically would lean a little closer to the dark side, there's nothing at this point that I think would have tempted him. Besides from what I already did. Because I'm not. Like, this is, this doesn't give you the value. Like, I did a little bit of dark. Like, I'm lighter than Bastila for some reason. Like, in my opinion, I should be darker than Bastila, but... Then again, Bastila is a little arrogant at this point. She's a lot arrogant at this point. Not make excuses for her. All right, is everybody actually with me? Yes, cool. Concussion grenade. Bang. Force push. Force push. The force fights with me. And me as well. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. No, but. The force fights with me. Basla here to get a murder on. Hey, there's the robot we went looking for. Uh, sorry, the companion we went looking for. Okay. Sorry for the music being a little loud there. He said, thank you for saving me, Master Today. I am C842, a personal assistance droid. 
a personal assistance droid. As I said, I am C842, a personal assistance droid. Although in recent months the assistance I render seems to have taken on a disproportionate significance. Are you Elise's droid? Did she send you to find me? Please do not tell her you saw me. Were you running from her? Yes, but I have my reasons. I'm afraid my owner became a bit too attached to me. Obsessed, even. She she tried to treat me as her dead husband. It was not healthy for her. Uh, all the time? You don't want to know. Probably not. She is obsessed. She rarely sees other people and appears to be fixated on me as her husband. She was becoming more and more insular. I thought it best that I leave. She may meet other real people this way. In fact, that was the reason I came here and sought out those cat hounds. Are you suicidal or something? I think it would be best if I were no longer a factor. She would meet new people, living people. Please, will you destroy me? Fine. I'll destroy you and tell her why you did it. Thank you, kind sir. You have my eternal gratitude. And I don't... Yeah, that's neutral. I, I figured that'd be neutral. Because, like, I I'm not here to play fucking matchmaker. The droid wants to die, the droid wants to die. I, I feel like that's how this character would see it. Oh, <gasps> holy shit. I didn't realize this was right here. And we have time, too. Oh shit, are there Kinrath in here? There better not be kin Oh, if there's Kinrath in here, we're gonna die. I think there's Kinrath. I don't remember. I remember one of the games. Fuck, there's Kinrath. <laughs> I'll attempt this. Uh, if we die horribly, then I'm gonna come back later. I remember, I don't know if it's this game or the second game. I'm pretty sure it's the second game that Kinrath are brutal as hell. I don't remember. It might be this one. It might be this one. Oh my god, I missed. Save me, Bastila. Save me. I'm playing a very slow burn build. It's gonna take a bit before I'm super useful. don't normally play this build because I thought, you know, I've beaten the game before. I'll do something I've never tried before and I'm gonna get my ass kicked. Oh god, it saved. Uh, Bastila, do... Uh. What can I do? Stun them. Stun them all while I kill them like a badass. I'd like to point out this is all Basila. That shouldn't be possible. Uh, Basila burned out all of her uses of cure. Ah, uh, yeah, this is why Kinrath sucks. The poison. So be it. Thank God I brought a droid along. You know what? You're really pulling your weight here. Because uh, you're immune to poison, and poison's the main reason the Kinraths are a problem. What? It was definitely the second game. <laughs> Definitely the second game, because there's like a Kinrath Matriarch in the second game, and it is, oh my god, is it deadly. Like the regular Kinrath I can handle, but... I'm just gonna... 
Yeah. I'm just gonna get all the force crystals. And I thought that nothing was gonna happen this episode. I was really disappointed. I was really just like worried. Ooh, strength gauntlet. Uh, I already have a response package. Yeah, I was really worried that nothing was going to happen. And then, uh... That's interesting. So it doesn't increase the hit, but it does increase the damage. Ah. Uh, that's interesting. All right. Well, fun fact. While lightsabers, unlike regular melee weapons, use dexterity to calculate their chance to hit, for instance, observe the vibroblade has a plus six to hit unmodified and the lightsaber has a plus 11 to hit unmodified this is because my deck score is 14 and my Because, like, the weapons themselves, blah, 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 blah. We're doing game mechanic stuff here. Uh, all right. So, yeah, the regular Viper Blade shouldn't have any positives to hit, and the lightsaber doesn't have any positives to hit either. So. I have a plus six. I believe that has to deal with level. So. I have a plus six, but a minus one, which means I have a seven plus to hit, which seven plus four is 11, which is my chance to hit with the lightsaber. You get what I'm saying? This means that the lightsaber uses your dexterity to calculate the chance to hit versus your strength. However, something to note I'm dealing piss damage with the lightsaber because apparently lightsaber damage is calculated based off of strength and not dex, unlike ranged weapons. Which I think ranged weapons actually don't have a plus minus to them when it comes to damage. I think ranged weapons are just flat. But, for instance, if I equip the lightsaber, it is 1 to 15 damage, but if I swap from my dex... Well, fuck! That means I'm literally... It should say the base da the base damage is two to six. I literally do less damage. <laughs> oh, this is a this is a. Uh, I'm too far into the episode. I have to get my strength score to flat. Wait, does that also increase the minimum? Holy shit! It does! No wonder I suck!
That being said, I'm also... But I'm marginally... Marginally... The hell are... The hell are Bastila stats? Ah, uh, but I'm a force boy. And I'm also really, really good at saving throws. <laughs> like, if you look at it, she has a 7, an 11, and a 7. And I have a 12, a 13, and a 16. And my 13 is unmodified. And I don't know if that's because I'm a player character and I get pull extra bullshit. But, like, I also have a a really good wisdom and charisma, which means my force powers are a pain to resist. But I need to get that strength score. Man, I thought min-maxing would, would pay in this game. It does not. Min-maxing is god-awful in this game. Like... Intelligence is the only score you can attempt to dump stat, and that's only at zero. I thought strength would work because I knew that the lightsaber to hit, at least, was based off of dex, or was based off whatever was highest. But the damage score goes down too, which is so weird because, like, there's. I, I think the second game addresses it. I'm not sure, because I know there's a feat you can take in the second game which allows it to switch, but I don't know if that changes the damage too, because... Damn. The thing is, if I, if I swap... I just hit 18, which means I become easier to hit. And I'm more of a force boy anyway. So Bastille is about to be scary. Yeah, Bastila is about to become a fucking god. Yeah, once I get my decks up to uh up to 5 on its own. Up to plus 5 on its own, then I'll uh or hell even plus 4 on its own. Well, how does how does that work? Because I'm... Yeah, because if I... Yeah, if I just go... Plain, plain Jane. I have an 8, a 16, a 10, a 10, a 16, a 16. Bastila, meanwhile... And I should also unequip the strength gauntlets because that makes her look better than she is. Bastila, meanwhile, has a 12, a 20, a 12, a 10, a, tw a 12, and a 15. I feel like... I feel like there's some bullshit going on here. Either that or, or I royally fucked up with my three 16s. Might have been better off going with only two of them. Still, because of my two plus threes, because I, I built this as a force character, I built this as a really strong force character. So because of my two thirteens, they actually have a minus six against all saving throws. Or rather, my saving throw force powers the threshold is plus six to hit, which is actually really good. Because I don't know if this game uses the fortitude, reflex, and will as a modifier. I doubt it. They're probably hard numbers for whether you pass or fail. 
given how it's calculated because it's level plus those two. Yeah. Level. Five plus attacking level plus wisdom and charisma modifiers. So you need a 15. You need to get a 21. Yeah, you need to get a 21 to pass my force powers. Meanwhile, with Bastila's, you only need to get... a 17. Which I almost automatically pass if they're modifiers. Which I don't know if their modifiers are... Actually, we can figure out if their modifiers are hard numbers. Because it should say here. Nah, but it, it won't go back far enough because it, it logs in me switching out items. Well, I definitely learned something new. And I have a question that I guess I'll ask my D&D &D friends, which is... Is it better to have minus one AC, or is it... Actually, I'll put that to the comments, too, if you play a lot of D&D, uh, &D or just a, a generic D20 system that functions similar to this. Is it better to be one point easier to hit, to take a hit to your AC by one point, to deal an extra one point of damage minimum and maximum? Because that's essentially the question of whether or not I should be boosting my dex or my strength. Especially once I start getting those force powers rolling. Because, like, when I start to get those force powers rolling... Oh, but I mean, that's a no-brainer, though, because it's, it's only a, it's a, only a one-shift right now because I only have the one weapon, but... If I'm doing two attacks, that's plus one every attempted attack. Either way, Bastila is way fucking better to have access to that. But still, holy shit. Well, I... I didn't realize how powerful my strength build was. But ironically, it was wasted as a Darksider. Because having a high to hit and damage as a Darksider doesn't really matter because you have a lot of attacks that deal damage outright anyway. So as a Darksider, you want to have a high defense. But as a light sider, you want to have a high attack. Because your force powers will offset. Because as a light side, your force powers are relevant more so towards defense. So you don't have to have a good defense because your force powers will compensate. So you can be a really fucking strong guy and let the force enable you to be quick and tough. Whereas as a dark sider, being super fucking strong doesn't matter because all of your force powers evolve around killing people. I should have totally... I should have gone for strength instead of dex so much. Granted, early game would have been way harder, but I would have also used melee weapons from the outset, which... Man, I could have taken all the fucking levels of flurry. But whatever. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs>
And I really feel like you should be taking dark side from destroying the Kinrath eggs, but... Because, you know, you're snuffing out life for greed. But, uh... And it says snuffing out the innocent life within. I really feel like you should be getting dark side points. But oh well. I guess it's like, eh, you're not going to get dark side points because you're clearing out the infestation. But it's like you're also killing babies. But I'm going to finish clearing out this cave. Now, if I remember correctly... There ought to be... And again, that might only be in the second game. And in one of the crystal caves, I remember there being a specific crystal formation that attuned with you, depending on whether they were light side or dark side, but I'm fairly certain that was the second game. So I will look that up for next time, and I will I will see how many more attributes bonuses I get because I want to get my strength at least to a flat zero and I also want to get my dex and my uh, willpower and charisma capped and uh, that's where we're going to end this episode with me almost dead I'm here Bastel almost dead Actually, fuck no, I have a shit ton of lightsaber crystals. What? And even if I can't enter the Ebon Hawk at this time, which I don't know if I can or not, I haven't tried, but I, I'm fairly certain I can't, there's still a workbench that I can use, which is the only thing that I really want access to at this point. Best thing, too, I. This character canonically, and if you couldn't figure out all the foreshadowing yet, don't worry, it's coming. Still no spoilers in the comments, please. Um, but this character is canonically quite powerful in the Force. Um, they're also a, a pretty decent fighter, which is why I want to bring their strength up at least one tick. But I want to max out my charisma, because they're also super charismatic, and I want to max out my wisdom. Now, it said I got so many crystals. Oh, I got different colors. Oh, shit, I got ten red crystals. <laughs> I got ten red crystals. That's so bad. Well, I'm not using that. This will be good for a, uh, <laughs> a clickbait. <gasps> Ooh. Stun DC 10. Oh, yeah, but that's really low. And I'm not playing a, a scoundrel, so I don't get sneak attack. So that's not worth doing. Oh, well, actually, it is worth doing because you can only have one... Rubot on there. Alright. Well, Bastila just became terrifying. Cool. Now to take my clickbait shot.
so people think that I'm some sort of asshole. It's what can be, I do? It's gonna be great. <gasps> sure. Oh, you know what would be even better? time oh wait did is it item glitching is it item glitching again okay no it's not yeah she's not even wearing the strength gauntlets because they still didn't have them reapplied yeah she's fucking broken yeah because i i did say that i was going to use a double-bladed lightsaber. I did say that. And that evens out our damage potential. And that gives her the stun sword, which she actually is probably better with. Yeah. Yeah, that evens out quite nicely. So, what I would like is to turn solo mode off. There we go. What can I do? There we go. All right, with that, <laughs> uh, with that, that's the end of this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you didn't feel uh, too betrayed by the thumbnail. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.